know that if you know how to cook one risotto, then you know how to cook every risotto. Now watch this video and you know everything that is to know about cooking a successful risotto. You be risottoed out in the end and, and I promise you, you make better risottos than most Italians do. Now does that sound exciting? Okay, let's get straight into it. Now, you know my formula that cooking success does not come from a recipe because the most important things are ingredients. Second most techniques, certain most ingredients chemistry and history and the last and least important thing are recipes. Now you get that and you soon cook like a Michelin star chef. I promise you that. Who am I? Well, my name is Walter Trapp and I'm originally from Austria. I used to run and manage and own some of the best restaurants in Europe and now I run my own cooking school. Now risotto is a North Italian dish and if you translate it, it means small rice. The saying goes, a risotto never waits for you. It is you who has to wait for the risotto. And that's sort of true to some extent because a risotto needs a lot of attention. But it's a very simple dish. And did you know that rice arrived in Italy in the first century BC? And it was only used as a medicine? Now that sounds great to me. Because that would be true. You could have risotto every day and it'd be fine. <laughs> anyway, the medicine idea was soon given up on, so they, they ditched that. Uh, and I, I wonder why. In rice fully arrived in Italy in the Middle Ages again, and this time sort of as a food, and most likely with the Arabs through Sicily or the Aragonese through Naples, or some say it came through Venice. It was still not considered as a food, and it was rather considered as a spice. Now my question in all of this is, if rice was considered as a spice, how boring must the food have tasted in those days? I mean, rice is not that great tasting. And it was then finally adopted as a food in the 15th century and Italy started to grow its own rice when it found, when risotto rice found its home in the Po River Valley, where they grow the best rice in the world. Now risotto rice is different as it's a high starch short grain rice like paella rice or sushi rice. It absorbs moisture like other rice but at the same time it releases its starch through rubbing or stirring. Hence stirring is so important especially towards the end when the starch, liquid, cheese and butter emulsifies and gives the risotto its unique creamy silken texture. God, oh, it's gonna be so good. Next big thing or big, big question is what rice should you use for risotto? Well, you're gonna say risotto rice. <laughs> yeah, um, there are quite a few different ones around. I need to tell you, you will probably say now a warrior rice, but that's no, no real help either because a warrior rice, I mean, that's a variety of a rice. It's like with different types of wine grapes. I mean, you know, you have Shiraz, you have Cabernet, you have Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, now you you can, for example, you can go and you can buy a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon for ten dollars. I want for a thousand dollars. Now you, you get me? Don't stress out because I'm not going to tell you that you need to buy rice for a thousand dollars. But I am getting some ideas here. Um, so the quality comes from the farming and the processing. Good rice is generally grown better, processed less and gentler process because after threshing and husking the rice, the rice kernels are bleached which is also known as polishing or the polishing process where rice kernels are rubbed against each other which removes the dust and it leaves a silken luster. And that's where good rice and bad rice is created. If it's over polished like the supermarket stuff, the rice loses its firm texture because it loses the outer layers, the fibrous bit, and with it your risotto will be sloppy rather than creamy and grainy. It will lose all its structure. Good quality rice is not completely stripped off of its outer fibrous layer and it gives your risotto a superior texture and flavor compared to the cheap stuff. 
Now the best rice comes from the north of Italy where farmers apparently still use uh, a water channel system developed by Leonardo da Vinci. They plant the rice and once the shoots grow above the water they release carpfish into the flooded rice fields. Now carpfish, uh, I don't know if you know them but those guys are pretty lazy. They do not feed on shoots that have grown above the water, only on the new and upcoming weeds making the fish the natural organic gardener. So no pesticides are used either herbicides, fungicides, moldicides, whatever you call them. Once the rice is ready for harvest, most of the water gets drained off, the fattened carp fish is removed. If it's large enough they sell it and then the rice gets harvested. I mean it's genius isn't it? And you also when you go to Italy you might come across vintage risotto rice. I mean seriously I'm not joking, I'm not, I'm not making this up, okay? As older the rice, apparently, as harder the grain and as better the texture in the risotto, so you will find vintage rices. The most, the three most popular risotto rice grains readily available are a burio, which has been considered the favorite for a long time and therefore there is that is very common. Aborio has a medium sized grain and it's a really good all rounder, hence it's so popular. Unfortunately, this has led to a tsunami, a tsunami of low quality Aborio rice. And I personally don't bother with Aborio rice anymore unless it comes to a very good brand. Well, that's not from the supermarket. Now, now, I need to throw that in. Did you ever wonder why good chefs don't shop in the supermarkets? Did you? Really? Did you? Well, most of the stuff the supermarkets sell you is no good. There's not much good in terms of quality. That's why chefs stay away from that produce. Low quality ingredients make a chef and a cook look bad. Good ingredients make a chef and a cook look good. Because chefs are no miracle worker. It's like you get some cheap wine and you fill it into an amazing designer bottle. And then you put a pretty label on it and then you put a good story, a bloody good story on the back of the bottle and it looks great on the shelf and you think you got the real deal. But when you open it, it's still cheap wine. Now can you see where I'm going here? So you get your rice from a good deli, a good speciality shop and you want to know my favorite rice? Well, it's, where is it here? The Alone in Anna. It's the finest grain rice and basically apparently 50 or 60 years ago it was basically extinct. It's hard to overcook because it's the roundest rice. The grains are shorter, thicker than other risotto viruses. Vialone Nano is great for elegant risottos like seafood, fish, truffle, saffron and so on. And yes, you heard me, it does not overcook that easy. And it also makes the quickest risotto, so I'll put that nicely here. Cannaroli on the other hand is the chef's favorite rice and it's sort of really good for rustic risottos like mushroom. Cannaroli has the largest or the longest grain and a rougher texture and a firmer bite than aborio. But cannaroli needs a lot of stirring otherwise it tends to cook uneven. Now there's a lot of other varieties around like Martelli, Roma, Originaro, Ribe, Baldo, Calicio, I think, Andrea, uh, and they sort of all, all different in their own way. Additionally, to the name of the varieties, you will find words like commune or original, meaning it's a basic rice, lower quality, like the bottom shelf in terms of quality. Semifino is better. Then you have Fina, and then you have Super Fina, and that's the ones you want to buy. Now don't worry, don't worry, the supermarket stuff you will not find those terms. I reckon supermarket stuff would not even make the Comune Originaro shelf. I mean, why would you want to waste your time with them? You, you, you cannot buy a moped and expect it to, to turn into Harley Davidson in the moment you, you hit the road. Oh, come on, you, you, you know what I mean. 
So who invented risotto? Legend says that a cook failed on his arancini recipe, so he winged it, just like chefs do so well and so often, and he turned it into a porridge-like dish known as a risotto, but, but that's probably not true, I, I don't think so, because another story goes that risotto used to be a soup, and it sounds a bit more believable, because rice keeps absorbing liquid after cooking, uh, kept adding liquid little by little to get the consistency right. So, so now you know everything about rice. What else? Mm, stock. Uh, it needs to be a bloody good one. Good stock will give the risotto body strength, depth, layers and layers. And if you don't have a good stock and you only have cheap stuff, you, you can actually, I don't know if you knew that, upgrade cheap stock by adding one sheet of soaked gelatin per 150 to 100, 200 milliliters of liquid. Now this will give your stock body length, strength, you know, the oomph, the oomph that's needed. Otherwise the risotto will taste watery and thin. Also with risotto, the stock needs to be boiling hot. Why? Well, several reasons. It will cook your risotto quicker, that's obviously clear. The pot will not burn on the bottom because the starch grains don't get trapped there. And then the starch inside the grain stays better entrapped and it will not start to release itself until the rice is almost fully cooked and that leads to a rice that's much more creamy, a risotto that's much more creamy. If your stock is cold, you will struggle to cook the rice properly and end up this raw tasting rice. It's going to be unpleasant, it's going to be crunchy. Now the other ingredients is wine. What does it do? It adds acidity. It's up to you how much you add, but you think about sort of maybe a glass of wine for three to four serves, you know, and then the rest, you, you can obviously serve with the risotto, or, or you can just have a glass of wine while you sort of cook that bloody thing, you know. Now I'm ready for cooking. It has never been clearer to me. What well, wine? Oh, again, a good one, of course. I, I would say usually the same grape variety you plan to drink with your risotto. So Riesling in a risotto makes Riesling the drinking wine, the serving wine. You get me? I, I don't need to, to go any further, do I? Cheese? Well, Parmesan or Grana Padano. So, Parmesan is stronger tasting because it comes from, it's only made in three provinces, the north of Italy, and it's done from November, so from March to November, where the cows are basically grass-fed. So it's just made from grass-fed milk, so that's why it's a bit dark in color as well. Grana Padano is made in the most northern provinces, and it's a bit milder tasting. And there's a lot about age of them too, but I think I'll make another video about that. But the main thing is that the cheese you use needs to be freshly grated. Why, why, why you wonder? Well, think about it, pre-grated cheese, you know, gets exposed to light and air and has oxidized and often tastes a bit rancid. Plus, pre-grated cheese is often stretched with so-called anti-caking agents, you know, which is tapioca starch. Now, it prevents the cheese from sticking together, which is great, isn't it? But it makes, <laughs> it makes good money too. Yeah, you add such cheese to your risotto and your risotto becomes like a white sauce, you know, it's like liquid plaster. It's basically, it's basically a disaster, you know. Well, it goes with like, like a poem, a risotto poem. And then the butter, lots of it, of course. So here we go. Now you know it all. Uh, let's get to cooking for the measurements for sort of a basic risotto. Check the recipe below. You wonder, you're wondering what's the wooden spoon for? It's not, um, I'm running out of money. It's called an Ita Italian governmental budget spoon. <laughs> One big hole. No, no, I'm joking. It's a special risotto spoon. It's called Gira Rizzo. Gira Rizzo. Translated rice stirrer. 
The special thing about that is that as you stir, the, the layer above passes through the hole in the opposite direction and through that you double the movement of your risotto and it makes it even creamier, especially towards the end. So le first let's make the sofrito. Sweat the onion and some garlic cloves in some butter like I use sort of three tablespoons on a low heat. Now I love the Italian measurements you know because you, you go in Italian cooking measurements a bit different than in the other words of cooking. You ask an Italian nonna about how much and they tell you a little bit of onion and a little bit of garlic and then you watch her doing it and that little bit of onion turns like into five onions and the little bit of garlic turns into sort of 10 plus garlic cloves. So I, I take very, very little onion here. <laughs> um, I cook it for three to four minutes on low heat, no color, that would taste too strong and discolor your risotto. Then add the rice and do the tostura, which means you toast the rice for approximately three minutes or so till it gets a glassy, shiny sort of look, like sweaty, B but never ever rinse your rice beforehand because that's not needed. So if anyone thinks of you, you need to rinse the rice, the rice, don't do that. Then you toast the rice a little bit. You don't want to burn it because otherwise the liquid can't get absorbed properly later on. Then you add the wine and then you cook it until it's all absorbed. Then you add your boiling stock little by little. Risotto does not need a lid. In the beginning, stir it occasionally, sort of every two to three minutes or so. If you, if you can't be bothered stirring it all the time. The stirring develops an evenly cooked rice and leads to a better creaminess towards the end when you stir all the time. That's when you have the highest starch release. Check it from time to time. The rice is cooked al dente, meaning it has a soft, firm bite. Al dente means it sticks to your tooth. But it's ready when, when you are happy with it, you know. When, when it comes to overcooking, quality rice is much, 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 much more forgiving than cheap rice. Cheap rice, you know, supermarkets will just collapse and it turns into like an oat porridge. The rice, good quality rice, will still hold together nicely. And if it's too dry, add a little bit more liquid. If it's too runny, cook it for a few more minutes longer. When you do stop cooking your risotto, turn off the heat, add the cheese and the butter, and you don't have to grate your cheese really fine, as it will melt anyway. Butter should be fridge cold, as cold butter might bind much better. We learned it in my sauce course. And then you beat the rice, you stress it rice. The Italians say, at this stage, you have to stress the rice. The rice meaning you almost whip it, you work it as hard as you can. So fats, liquid and starches develop an emulsion like butter's emulsion, like a butter sauce, or like a hollandaise, or like a mayonnaise. This will be, create the perfect creaminess. Check the texture by shaking for a wavy texture called ulonda, or meaning waves. If too thick, dilute with more stock. Season with salt and pepper and lemon juice, then the plating. But know this, risotto al onda means it's more liquid because that's why it has the waves. Cremonese is a more compact risotto version. It's firmer. Risotto in Italy is always served on a flat plate. Never in a soup bowl, so, spread, so it can spread itself evenly on the plate. And once it's served, it's at the perfect eating temperature. It chills the risotto right, otherwise it's too hot. That's just risotto, you say. What, what are all about the different flavoring options I promised you at the beginning? Well, be, be patient. I'm not finished yet. You, you remember what the Italians say? You need to wait for the risotto. But all you needed to know is I have shown you already because the flavorings you always, 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 always cook separate. Why? Well, that's where you can cook them perfectly. Like I fry my chicken and brown it and develop some flavor. I pan fry my mushrooms in butter and they taste much better than when they're boiled. I mean, you agree on that? Pan fried prawns are better than boiled prawns. Butter fried chicken is better than boiled one. So what do you 
what do you do while you cook your risotto apart from drinking wine? You, you separately cook the flavorings and then you add them and you whip them, beat them into the rice with the flavoring options, you know, as well as the herbs. That way everything is cooked to perfection, the rice, the mushroom, the chicken, you, you know what I mean. Easy, easy, isn't it? That's how a risotto should be. Easy. The Italians love it that way. You know, just, just the way the Italians like it. In my case, I make three different flavoring options, so I split the risotto into equal parts, 50-50-50, so everyone is happy, and the flavorings with the ravings and here we go that is the risotto masterclass check out my video about pan frying fish because that goes really nice with the risotto and thank you so much for watching thank you uh, i'll see you next time